shot the new Praetorian. <laughs> The ogre has asked me to inform you today that he is trying to be cool with you, Britannia, and really respects each and every one of you. So please remember, this is a Yank's opinion on what's going on over there. That said, Islam, it's good to be gone. Here comes the Laughing Ogre! Hello YouTube, I am Jack's desire for all countries to rule themselves and to root out problems even if they're disguised by religion. I gotta look at you YouTube, I'm telling you something right now. The Muslims don't even try to hide what they're doing. They will tell you their plans. They say what they do is they make a 10 year treaty. And then during that time of treaty with whatever country they have it with, they get as many of them in there as they can. And when they're overpopulating everyone else, then they break that treaty when they least expect it by bombing, by warring, by whatever. As a Jew, all I got to say is remember something called the eight day war? How about the six day war? How about the Golan Heights, where 300 Jewish tanks took on 1,200 Russian-equipped tanks that the Islamis had? Night vision in the whole nine yards, but due to brilliant tactics and the might, willpower, and fighting ability of the Jews, we destroyed those sand people. I'm here to talk about this today, but I, I'm going to do something that's very uncharacteristic for me. I'm going to calm it down just a wee little bit, and I'm going to, I'm going to let her take it away. Please, show a little bit of respect, because here comes the Prime Minister of Britannia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Glad you're safe. Uh, Theresa May is heading out now, as you can see, at Downing Street. We're expecting a few words from her tonight, and then we do... Following the sick and depraved terrorist attack on the streets of our capital this afternoon. The full details of exactly what happened are still emerging. But having been updated by police and security officials, I can confirm that this appalling incident began when a single attacker drove his vehicle into pedestrians walking across Westminster Bridge, killing two people and injuring many more, including three police officers. This attacker, who was armed with a knife, then ran towards Parliament, where he was confronted by the police officers who keep us and our democratic institutions safe. Tragically, one officer was killed. The terrorist was also shot dead. The United Kingdom's threat level has been set at severe for some time, and this will not change. Acting Deputy Commissioner Rowley will give a further operational update later this evening. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all who have been affected, to the victims themselves, and their family and friends who waved their loved ones off but will not now be welcoming them home. For those of us who were in Parliament at the time of this attack, these events provide a particular reminder of the exceptional bravery of our police and security services who risk their lives to keep us safe. Once again today, these exceptional men and women ran towards the danger, even as they encouraged others to move the other way. On behalf of the whole country, I want to pay tribute to them and to all our emergency services for the work they have been doing 
to reassure the public and bring security back to the streets of our capital city. That they have lost one of their own in today's attack only makes their calmness and professionalism under pressure all the more remarkable. The location of this attack was no accident. The terrorists chose to strike at the heart of our capital city, where people of all nationalities, religions and cultures come together to celebrate the values of liberty, democracy and freedom of speech. These streets of Westminster, home to the world's old oldest parliament, are ingrained with a spirit of freedom that echoes in some of the furthest corners of the globe. And the values our parliament represents, democracy, freedom, human rights, the rule of law, command the admiration and respect of free people everywhere. That is why it is a target for those who reject those values. But let me make it clear today, as I have had cause to do before, any attempt to defeat those values through violence and terror is doomed to failure. Tomorrow morning, Parliament will meet as normal. We will come together as normal. And Londoners and others from around the world who have come here to visit this great city will get up and go about their day as normal. They will board their trains. They will leave their hotels. They will walk these streets. They will live their lives. And we will all move forward together, never giving in to terror and never allowing the voices of hate and evil to drive us apart. I want to thank you so much, Prime Minister May, but I do have a few things to say about your speech. And I heard some other things that you said earlier today about this person was a British born. Well, Mrs. May, Prime Minister May, though he may have been British born, he was not from Britannia. He was not a Britisher not in his heart. He did not have the integrity of a Britisher. He did not have the, the love of queen and country. He did not have the respect for the place that history comes from. I understand this gentleman was looked into a few years ago and they decided he was a peripheral threat and so they let him go. Apparently they were wrong. I respect my British viewers very deeply. The hat, I'm not going to take it off and show you. This is an old school Kangol. It was made in Britain. It says in the back, born in England, raised on the streets of New York City. And isn't that the way it is, my, my Britishers, my friends, my beloved mother islanders? Doesn't it all start there with the Mother Island? Don't real Americans like myself humble ourselves and bow our head a bit before a queen? Elizabeth? Can I imagine someone that would have went further than, than they did into Parliament and like the gentleman that snuck in there one time and caught the queen in her own bedroom in her nighty? And because when he was confronted with this great woman, he ended up sitting down and having tea with her before he was removed. But would Islam do that when you have Chaudhry saying they want to turn Buckingham Palace into a mosque? And I believe I can speak for Cabbage Patch Bastard. And as meek and mild as he seems, I believe I can speak for the Britisher himself and say... If any of you Muslims were to put your hands on our beloved queen, we would not only end you, we would flay you and hang you up by your 
feet in front of Westminster for the world to see what happens to scum like your ilk. I would say, if you're not a Britisher at heart, if you want to bring this into this country, and I, I don't want to say much about Prime Minister May. I, I did not appreciate the way that she handled this. I heard another speech of hers where she talked about the diversity and this and that. Here's what I got to say. If the Catholics or any other, the Westboro Baptist Church, they're scum. They need to get out of my country. You talk about gays must die and God kills soldiers because of America. And they, you don't know the Jesus that I know. And judge me if you want. When you're done judging me, kiss both sides of my Jew butt. I'm doing my best to keep this PG today, folks. But Mrs. May, Prime Minister May, you're not going to release his name? Why? What, to protect his family? There's only one thing that can happen here, folks. A Muslim ban. It's not a religion. It's a political, it's a political entity that uses religion as a front. Ask their imams. The imams have been calling out to stab with knives and to run cars over. I covered it in my video yesterday. And, and by the way, just swing on over there and check it out. I'm staying even handed today because I love England. I love the idea of remain calm and move forward. Stiff upper lip, mate. Do your duty. Love queen and country. Give your life for set if need be. And if need be, run the rats out because they only bring the plague. They say they want to set up a fifth column. My beloved Britishers, they say they want to come to your country and breed you out. Please look before Google and YouTube and, and the only place you can get it is on the deep web and I encourage you to get on a Tor browser and go into the deep web and see what these animals are saying. It's time to end it, Prime Minister May. It's time to stop with the mincing, mealy mouthed moronic drivel that drips from you. I respect you, Prime Minister May, but do you work for somebody I don't know about? Is there some corporation you're beholden to? Do even you fillet the phallus of Lucifer? I'm going to ask you, Prime Minister May, to stand up to these people. Get them out of your country. Two choices. Reform Islam or all Muslims need to get out of Britannia. I say this for my countrymen. Reform Islam or get out of the United States of America of which we owe our heritage, our culture, our language, our very civilization to the mother island of Britannia. And I'm going to tell you right now, Islam, you may have Theresa May here mincing around and saying how this was a British-born, British-born but no British integrity, I say again. No British spirit. No love for queen and country. This dog's loyalties fell into Islam. And I say, being shot down like a dog was too good for him. Being drawn and quartered would have been much more appropriate. But in this day and age, I guess we just can't do that, can we? I'm going to end on a happy note. I know this is getting a little long, but the incomparable James Woods.
just happened to follow me. I'm going to pull it up real quick if I can do it. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to type in James. What is it? You know what? I'm not going to show you that he follows me. If you get on my Twitter, you can see that he follows me. But I did something that I haven't done. He's followed me for about a month. So uh, I thought, what the heck? I'll give it a shot. So I sent the ineffable, incomparable, peerless James Woods a message. And uh, it was about the rant that I did yesterday where I went full retard. I mean, I went full on. That was no act, folks. That was the ogre being the real me. So angry that these filthy cur dogs, these monkeys that belong in a cave, would attack the hollowed halls of Parliament. I was so angry, my fellow Britishers. I was ready to swim over there with my M30 on my back and kill every Islam I saw that didn't swear fealty to the mother island. So that said, this is supposed to be great. So I sent this, uh, you know, the thing that I sent to Mr. Woods and I said, Mr. Woods, if you have the time, could you make me famous? with a wash and a comment. If you do see this, or excuse me, if you do not see this, or just do not want to endorse a fucking nutcase like me, I understand. I love your work. And whew, I've tried to get all the Steven Crowder and all these boys that think their farts don't stink and they won't even condescend to talk to me, but James Woods, Anybody ever hear of a little film by Sergio Leone called Once Upon a Time in America? If you haven't, go watch it because James steals the show as he always does. What a man. What a great American. 180 plus IQ. A genius level thinker. A, a brilliant actor that can be anyone you want him to be. Mr. Woods, I only strive to be something maybe... A fraction of what you are because yes constant viewer a lot of this is an act yesterday it wasn't and after I sent that to him this was his response I watched it and I never endorse anyone and in caps only he says only because then someone would be hurt if I did not endorse them well done James Wood said to me I, I, I can't even, I'm not a hero worshiper. I, I'm going to read what I told him because he's only a man. But since I was around seven years old and I saw Once Upon a Time in America, I always said to myself, I would love to be like James Woods, the man that can walk into the room, take your wallet, take your wife, take your life, <laughs> and laugh and walk out. And I understand, Mr. Woods, it's a character, but... You play it so well. You are the ultimate gangster. Joe Pesci has nothing on you. Ray Liotta, oh my goodness. Drivel. I could go on. This, 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 this dog on. De Niro, what a jackass. They're not worthy to carry your script into your trailer. They're not worthy to deliver your craft services to your site. You are one of a kind. So I replied to him after he told me that I, it was well done. I said, Mr. Woods, you do not know what this means to me. Holy shit. I know you're just a man, but you are my hero. I kind of knew that you could not endorse me. That you took the time to look at my work will give me the courage to continue sounding the alarm. I am grateful, sir. Once upon a time in America made me want to be you when I was just a lad. I will not share this unless you don't mind me gloating just a bit. Mr. Woods, and I say this to you, sir, if you <laughs> condescend to watch this again, I'll probably send you a link, but I'll wait a month or two. I'm, I'm not the kind of guy to pester somebody, especially someone of your caliber that gave me his time. I, I'm not going to expect it every day, and I'm not going to harass you. But I told him, if you don't mind me going a little bit, Mr. Woods, you're a great American. And I hope you have many more years and that they are as sweet as honey. 
and as beautiful as your ocean view. And I signed it Ogre. He sent out a little thing last night about, you know, he showed his, his thing. I'm not going to repeat it because uh, it was great. And I want you to go look at, at Mr. Woods' tweets. And he says this back to me, which I, I, I didn't say it's carte blanche to just say it. Because I'm telling you now, he does not endorse me. But he did watch my video. He says, thanks, very kind words. And again, four little words from this man to me. Because I've loved him since I was a child. And I looked up to him and I, I thought, what a man. And even to this day, what a man. He, King Stud of Studsville. Doggone, ain't nobody got none in Brad Pitt, moron. Ugly little moron. Nobody beats the ineffable James Woods. So after he said that, I said, I did uh, brag a bit about it because I wanted to let him know. I said that I, I wouldn't share it unless I heard from him. I said, I did brag a bit about it. I had to tell someone. Thanks again, Mr. Woods. And I will not make this a license. Excuse me. I will not take this as a license to bug you every other day. That is not my style. Ogre. And Mr. Woods, when I do send this to you, if you watch it again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And usually my videos are a little bit more high key than this, but I have 20% followers from Britannia and I have a very good friend, the Britisher, and Cabbage Patch Bastard, and we work together, and I gotta show him respect, and I talked to him before I did this video, to, in all fairness, and they gave me a little bit of instruction so that I wouldn't come across as a jerk, so that I would just be able to make my point and not offend anyone, because even though the great and also incomparable Winston Churchill said, Offense can never be given, only taken. I still don't want to offend anybody. I don't want them to take offense at my words. So, I, you know, I wanted to be careful. I wanted to cover this in a good way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that right now with a wrap-up and say, Islam, Muslims, reform. Until I hear the imams preaching, let's love one another. Because I'm Jewish. Find me a rabbi that says we need to stone prostitutes. It's in, the, it's in the Torah. Find me a rabbi that says we need to cast a boy out that accidentally sees his mother naked into the desert where he would die. You know. And hey, I, I will stand up and say that the Jews need to go away. If the Christian religion was to ever turn full Westboro Baptist Church retard on us, I would say no. If the Catholic Church was to start taking people in basements and putting screws in their fingers and the, I, all the things that they did that were horrible, but also 500 years ago, I would say, get out. So, listen, folks. I'm done editorializing. I hope that you enjoyed this. I know it's a little different than, than most of the things that I do. And I've got a couple news pieces coming out for the hard bastard tomorrow and for the Britisher tomorrow. Because, you know, I hope one day I, I'm a dreamer. I'm a, I am shoot the moon. I don't want to fish for the moon in the water. I want to shoot the moon. And these are two people that I want to shoot it with. Cabbage, you're, you're on the list too. You know it, brother. But that said, how can we do it if we're taking over? If Charlie Hebdo was shot down, they were shooting people down in Texas because it was a draw. Well, how can we do it? So we don't have a choice. It's kind to them. They want their way of life. They want their religion. They want women to wear burqas. And they want all this stuff. They don't want women to cut their things off and destroy them sexually before they're... They want all these things. If they want that, well, take it over there and have it over there. Don't bring it here. Because eventually... You've already pissed off the Cabbage Patch Bastard Islam. But eventually, you're going to piss off the Britisher. And I mean that with due respect, mate. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth or say what you'll do. But I know you're very even-handed. I, I come to this man for a lot of advice. And he gives me good advice. And I take it nine times out of ten. But one day, Islam, you're going to piss the Britisher off. And when you piss off those kind of Brits, not that he's any tougher than Cabbage or whatever, but when you get those even-handed, stiff upper lip, keep calm and move on, 
when you piss them off. It's over for you. The terrible machine of war that is Britannia will rule the waves and the skies again. And I'm telling you, I'm warning you, I'm begging you with tears in my eyes. Don't do it. Because if they come for you, we come for you too. We are one in the same. We may live far apart. And maybe it may be but a little island. And we may be this big mass of land. But we, as I said before, owe everything to the mother island. That's it, folks. Remember, be good to your friends. Be good to your family members. Be good to your loved ones. Be quick to accept an apology. Be even quicker to give an apology, especially when that thing that your friend, your family member, your loved one has done seems to be so huge, you'll never be able to forget about it. Because constant viewers, my beloved Britons, in a time you think not, your friends, your family members, your loved ones, your life, and your very country will depart from you. <laughs> hey, Sydney Rough Diamond, man, listen to me real quick, brother. I got to say something real quick. I got to tell you Sydney, listen. I was trying to be cool as a cucumber, brother. I don't want to be able to blow it out right here, but I really want to know in the comments what you think about this resume thing. I don't understand. Just out, cheesy as fuck. There you go. Two, three, four. My fault, baby.